Today we will talk about the gastric secretion. And in order to understand the composition of the gastric secretion, we should know the type of the gland uh, which are located in, uh, in the gastric mucosa. We can imagine uh, that the stomach is divided in two, uh, two parts. The first part composed from the pontus and the body, and the second part composed from the antrum and the pyloric region. Oxentic glands are located in the first part, while the pyloric glands are located in the second part. And the oxentic glands uh, contain multiple secretory cells, uh, like the mucus cell, which secrete mucus, a parietal cell or uh, oxentic cell, which secrete the very important uh, gastric acid, the HCL, and the internecic factor which is responsible for the absorption of the vitamin B12. Also, we have the chief cell, chief cell which secrete the precursor pepsinogen, uh, which is the precursor for the proteolytic enzyme pepsin, which is important for the digestion of protein. In addition, we have the D cell, which secrete so a little amount of somatostatin, and the enterochromatin-like cell, which secrete histamine. These uh, last two cells are also present in the pyloric gland. The pyloric gland contains G cell, which is uh, very important for the production and the secretion of, uh, of uh, gastrin hormone. Uh, and also we have the uh, mucus cell, which secretes mucus. Gastric juice composition. The daily secretion of, uh, of stomach is between 2 to 3 liters. And the pH is very acidic, and it's about uh, 0.9 to 1. Uh, and the gastric uh, juice consists of the gastric acid, HCl, pepsin, which is the proteolytic enzyme for the digestion of protein, very large amount of mucus to protect the stomach from uh, the uh, proteolytic effect of the gastric acid and pepsin, electrolyte, water, and uh, internecic factor and other substance which is little important like the lipase and gelatinase. Mechanism of hydrochloric acid secretion. I am going to talk uh, only about the most important step in the formation of hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid will be formed in the lumen of the canaliculus of the parietal cell and in order to form uh, hydrochloric acid we need hydrogen ion and chloride ion. Hydrogen ion will come from the dissociation of water into hydrogen and hydroxide ion. Then the hydrogen ion will be secreted to the lumen of the canaliculus in exchange with the potassium and this process is catalyzed by the hydrogen potassium ATPs which uh, considered as the main driving force for the hydrochloric acid secretion. And if we want to inhibit the secretion of HCl, we should inhibit this step and uh, this is uh, usually needed in uh, case of uh, treatment of uh, peptic ulcer and there is a drug called Omprazole which inhibit uh, hydrogen potassium ATPs and uh, uh, thus inhibit the acid secretion and this is very effective in the treatment of the peptic ulcer. Now we have the hydrogen ion inside the lumen of the canaliculus uh, and we need the chloride ion. The accumulated uh, hydroxide ion which came from the dissociation of water uh, will react with the carbon dioxide by the aid of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase in order to form the bicarbonate uh, ion. Then the bicarbonate ion uh, extruded to the interstitial fluid in exchange with the chloride. Now we have the chloride ion inside the parietal cell and uh, this uh, chloride ion will be actively secreted to the lumen of the canaliculus. So this uh, will give uh, a strong solution of hydrochloric acid and uh, then uh, this hydrochloric acid will be secreted outward through the open of the end, uh, at the end of the canaliculus into the lumen of the gastric gland. The functions of hydrochloric acid, it participates in the breakdown of protein and polysaccharide and it will change their 
structure in the ingested food, but it has no digestive action on the fats. The second function of hydrochloric acid, it hinders the growth of pathogenic bacteria uh, and it will sterilize the ingested food uh, and hydrochloric acid kill most of the microbes that enter along with the food. But this action is not 100% perfect uh, because there is some type of bacteria is resistant to, to, the, to the acidic media and can survive uh, in, the, in the stomach. A third function, it provides an optimal pH for the action of pepsin. When the pepsinogenes, which is the precursor of pepsin, are secreted, they have no digestive activity. However, as soon as they come in contact with hydrochloric acid, they are immediately activated to the, to the active form, pepsin, which, uh, which is important uh, in the digestion of protein. The optimum, optimum pH for the pepsin is 2, and uh, when the pH become uh, higher at uh, 5, uh, it will, uh, the action of, uh, of pepsin will be blocked. In order to protect the stomach wall, there, uh, there are two types of mucus secretion. Soluble mucus, which is secreted by the cell of the pyloric and cardiac gland, and these cells secrete a large quantity of a thin mucus, which is soluble and helps in protecting the stomach wall from damage by the peptic digestion. The second type is the viscid mucus. Uh, on the entire surface of the stomach, a mucosa between the gland has a continuous layer of special type of mucus cell called, called surface mucus cell. They secrete this, this viscid mucus and in large quantities uh, in order to coat the stomach mucosa with a gel layer of mucus often more than one millimeter in thick uh, and this providing a major shell of protection for the stomach wall uh, and another characteristic of this mucus it is alkaline it contains the uh, bicarbonate ion in order to neutralize the uh, effect of hydrochloric acid therefore the normal underlying stomach wall is not directly exposed to the highly acidic proteolytic stomach secretion. Even slight contact with the food or any irritation of the mucosa directly stimulate these, these mucus cells to secrete an additional quantity of this thick alkaline visit mucus. In addition to the mucus coat, the stomach has multiple factors that protect its wall from the damaging effect of hydrochloric acid and pepsin. These factors are a highly alkaline mucus coat. We are already uh, mentioned this factor. The rapid replacement of the epithelial cells. The epithelial cell of the stomach is replaced every three to six days. Tight junction between epithelial cells. Prostaglandin, which act as a cytoprotector to gastric mucosa, it can stimulate the mucus production and increase the bicarbonate secretion, and at the same time inhibit the acid accumulation and increase mucosal blood flow. All these factors act together to protect the stomach wall. But we should mention the substance that may hurt uh, the stomach wall or disturb the mucosal barrier. These substances include H. pylori, Helicopter pylori, which is a, a bacteria that can survive in the acidic media and can multiply and uh, uh, disturb the mucosal barrier of the stomach and even cause uh, uh, peptic ulcer or even uh, gastric carcinoma. The second substance is the drugs like aspirin, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Other substances uh, like alcohol, vinegar, bile salt, all these substances can uh, disturb the barrier and uh, cause the peptic ulcer. We can divide the gastric secretion in a three phase, cephalic phase, gastric phase and intestinal phase. The cephalic phase occur before arriving of the food in the stomach. It is stimulated by the sight of the food, the smell, or thought about the food, or taste the food inside the mouth. This will activate uh, the cerebral cortex or the appetite center 
or the hypothalamus uh, and uh, this will result in stimulation of the vagus nerve will, which transmit the signal to the stomach. The emotional state affect this, this stage and, uh, and uh, uh, in case of anger or hostility uh, this will be associated with the hypersecretion of the gastric mucosa while depression and fear uh, depress the gastric secretion. Uh, this is due to the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. Almost about 30% of the gastric secretion occur during the cephalic phase. The second phase is the gastric phase and 60% of the gastric secretion is associated with this phase and this phase began with the entry of the food inside the stomach and this uh, presence of the food inside the stomach will cause gastric distension gastric distension will stimulate the stimulate the nervous uh, uh, system which is the local nervous system on the vagal nerve this stimulation will produce the acetylcholine and acetylcholine act on three level either directly on the parietal cell to produce hydrochloric acid or indirectly uh, uh, in activation of the enterochromatin cell which produce the histamine and the histamine act on the H2 receptor on the parietal cell to, to stimulate the production of gastric acid or by stimulation of the G cell which produce the important hormone which is the gastrin which also uh, activate the parietal cell to produce hydrochloric acid in addition to this stimulatory effect of the vagus, the vagus nerve will inhibit the uh, D cell, which produce the stomatin, which is an inhibitory factor to the G cell. The second factor which activates uh, the uh, G cell to produce the gastrin is presence of the protein in, in the meal and the indigested protein like peptide, amino acid have a strong stimulatory effect on the G cell to produce the gastrin which, which acts on two levels either in the enterochromatin cell or directly on the parietal cell. So this results in the production of the hydrochloric acid. It is important to know that uh, at this level we can use an uh, histamine antagonist to block the H2 receptor uh, in order to decrease the gastric acid secretion and this uh, can be used as a treatment in, uh, in peptic ulcer uh, patients and this drug called uh, Cimetidine and uh, like the other uh, drug which is called omprazole we already mentioned it uh, the omprazole act on another mechanism uh, by inhibiting the proton pump which is uh, an step in the formation uh, of uh, gastric acid the third uh, phase is called the intestinal phase and it is uh, it is began with the presence of the food in the uh, upper part of the intestine and uh, uh, this causes only 10% of the gastric secretion. Uh, the intestinal mucosa contain a G cell which produces the gastric and this G cell will be activated in the same mechanism uh, that occur in the stomach either by the distension or by the presence of the indigested protein inside the stomach this will stimulate the G cell to produce the gastrin which transported by the blood to the stomach to uh, increase the production of the uh, of the hydrochloric acid and pepsin this is in summary of the uh, three phases of gastric secretion Cephalic phase, which is responsible for about 30% of the gastric secretion and stimulated by the sight, smell, thought, taste of the food, or chewing. This will stimulate the cerebral cortex and this uh, signal will be transmitted to the vagal, uh, via the vagal nerve to the stomach to increase the gastric secretion. The second phase uh, uh, is began with the entry of the food inside the stomach and it is responsible for the secretion of about 60% of uh, 60% of uh, gastric secretion uh, and uh, this phase is stimulated by the distension of the stomach by the food and this will stimulate the nervous system uh, local uh, enteric nervous system and the vagus and uh, this uh, stimulus will uh, act on the G cell 
or directly on the parietal cell. The other factor that stimulate the uh, G cell to produce the gastrin is the peptide or the indigestive protein inside the stomach. While the factor that inhibit the G cell is um, the very low pH, which occur when the uh, when the HCl secretion become very high. The third uh, phase is the intestinal phase, which is responsible for only 10% of the gastric secretion. And uh, 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 this uh, phase is stimulated by the presence of protein uh, in, in the upper part of the uh, intestine. This will stimulate the G-cell in the intestinal mucosa to produce gastrin, which is transported to the, uh, to the uh, parietal cell of the stomach via the blood uh, to, pro to produce the HCL. The other factor uh, in the intestine, uh, other hormone uh, uh, inhibit the uh, G cell and parietal cell. This hormone called secretin, cholecystokinin, and GIB. The motor function of the stomach are classified in threefold. The subtive relaxation of the stomach, which occur during the cephalic phase and involve the fantas and the body of the stomach. It is uh, and the aim of this uh, receptive relaxation is to increase the size of the stomach in order to be able to store a large quantity of the food until that uh, these foods can be processed and passed into the small intestine. The aim of the second uh, motor function of the stomach is to mix the food with the gastric secretion until it forms a semifluid mixture called chyme. This mixing and the propulsive movement occur when the stomach is distended by food, so during the gastric phase, and begin as a weak constrictor wave at a rate of 3 to 4 minutes and start near the midpoint of the uh, stomach and progress toward the, uh, the antrum. When they reach the antrum, they become more intense, strong peristaltic wave, and they are about 6 times powerful as the usual mixing wave in the body and this help in the propulsion and mixing of the food this uh, peristaltic wave usually associated with the slow wave that that uh, are generated by the uh, precursor cell the cell of the bear catch the third motor function is the embedding of the kind from the stomach into the small intestine this occurs slowly at a rate suitable for the proper digestion and absorption by the small intestine. And the emptying of the stomach is opposed by the resistance of the pyloric sphincter because we, all, we already said that the pylorus is tonically uh, constricted due to a vagal signal. So it is resistant for the passage of the food. But presence of the strong peristaltic wave will, uh, uh, in the uh, antrum and the pylorus will force several millimeters of the kind each time to pass into the duodenum. So the peristaltic wave provide a pumping action that is a frequently called pyloric pump which help in the in the uh, passage of the chyme into the small intestine we are going to talk more about the role of the pyloric pylorus in the stomach emptying the pylorus is usually tonically contracted this tonic contraction is is weak enough so it it uh, allowed the passage of the water on the fluid with ease, while it is great enough, strong enough to prevent the movement of the semifluid food, uh, the chyme, into the duodenum, except when there is a strong peristaltic wave which forces several millimeters of this chyme to pass through the pylorus. The degree of the construction of the pyloric sphincter can increase or decrease under the influence of signal from the stomach on the duodenum. Regulation of the gastric motility and emptying. This is occur at two levels, gastric and intestinal. The, each level contains two mechanisms, nervous mechanism and hormonal. For the gastric level, we have the uh, nervous mechanism which include local reflex through the myenteric reflexes and the vagus nerve. And the hormone include the gastrin which is secreted by both the stomach and small intestinal mucosa. These two factors act to 
stimulate the gastric motility and emptying and at the same time will inhibit the bilateral sphincter in order to allow the passage of the chyme into the small intestine. While at the intestinal level, there is the hormone secreting cholecystokine, VIB, GIB, which inhibit the gastric motility and emptying. And the, uh, the nervous mechanism, which called the interior gastric reflex, both these two uh, mechanisms will send a signal from the duodenum to depress the pyloric pump and increase the pyloric tone. So it will uh, uh, depress the, uh, the emptying of the stomach and slow the gastric motility. We say that at the intestinal level, there is the anterior gastric reflex which slow the gastric emptying. This reflex usually stimulated by the high or low osmolarity of the chyme by the distension of the wall of the small intestine, by the presence of the protein and fat digestion product, and by the low pH. So all uh, these factors will stimulate the anterior gastric reflex to inhibit the, uh, the emptying of the stomach to allow the, uh, the, uh, the process of the food inside the small intestine. We are going to talk about the intestinal hormone which causes uh, slow uh, the gastric emptying and uh, this uh, most important hormone is the uh, cholecystokine which is released from the duodenum and in response to the fat mainly fatty acid and monosaccharide or protein digestion product and mainly amino acids such as phenylalanine the mechanism of action of cholecystokine is blocking the excitatory effect of gastrin hormone on gastric muscle second hormone called secretin and uh, collectively it's called enterogastrons uh, and it is released uh, also from the duodenum and has a direct inhibitory effect on the smooth muscle of, uh, of the stomach to inhibit the uh, peristaltic wave and the pyloric pump. We know that the chyme which comes from the stomach is normally hypertonic acidic due to the presence of the uh, hydrochloric acid with high fat concentration, protein, and carbohydrate. And all these substances will stimulate the secretin secretion.